Hey guys, Mr. Jennings here. Um, just wanted to spend a little time going over chapter 27 with you guys, having right thoughts. Um, but before we do that, uh, I'll give you your, your jokes for today. Um, let's see. Um, we know that 6 was scared of 7 because 7 ate 9, but why did 7 eat 9? because you're supposed to eat three squared meals a day. Three squared equals nine. Um, excuse this one. I know some of you will enjoy this one because it's just the kind of humor you like. Uh, I just tooted in my wallet. Now I have gas money. Uh, I got the word jacuzzi and yakuza confused. Now I'm in hot water with the Japanese mafia. I don't know why Marvel hasn't tried to put advertisements on the Incredible Hulk. He's essentially a giant banner. If you don't get that one, I think banner is, is his real last name. Um, my job is to drill holes in things and then bolt them together. At first, it's boring, but later on, it's riveting. Dad, are we pyromaniacs? Yes, we are, son. Um, the only thing flat earthers fear is sphere itself. All right, kind of lame ones today, but they usually are. So, so looking at lesson twenty-seven, having right thoughts, uh, as I've done with the previous chapters, just some key points that hopefully you you saw as you went through the chapter, as you were uh, reading through the chapter in the book, as well as reading the references um, and filling in the answers that I've provided to you. Uh, having right thoughts, and this is an important thing uh, for each of us at any age, um, as we as we strive to live a life that's pleasing to the Lord. First of all, God is pure and unselfish in his thought life. Uh, his thoughts are beyond our understanding. We have a section there that talks about what does God think about in the book. God is pure and unselfish in his thought life. His thoughts are beyond our understanding. Uh, second of all, a key point that hopefully you got out of the chapter, uh, God wants us to guard what we put into our minds. Um, and very important. Uh, also, God has specific principles for what we should think about. God has specific principles for what we should think about. Uh, and then we can control what we put into our minds. So again, God is pure and unselfish in his thought life. His thoughts are beyond our understanding. Uh, God wants us to guard what we put into our minds. Uh, God has specific principles for what we should think about. And we can control what we put into our minds. Uh, so there's a couple sections before I get to the teacher's lesson as I go over the, there's some final thoughts. There's a couple sections I wanted to look at a little more closely. Um, one section in your uh, book page, on page 207, God's Promise of Peace. It's very short in your book, but I wanted to spend a little bit more time um, kind of going a little more in depth into that because I think it's an important uh, part of the chapter that isn't spent a lot of time on. Uh, so it says God's promise of peace, again on page 207. In Isaiah 26, 3, God promises perfect peace to the one who trusts in him. And, uh, you know, a, a peaceful life can be very much be caused by uh, our thought life. Our, our thoughts can do a lot of things to us. They can make our lives very worrisome and um, a struggle for us or they can bring a lot of peace into our life so so God wants us to get our thought life under control that we can have and experience his peace um, so looking at that a little more closely our thought life and how it affects the peacefulness of our lives that's what we're looking at here is again I'm just expanding that section a little bit our thought life and how it affects the peacefulness of our lives first of all we must have a relationship with God through reading the Bible and prayer in order to have the thoughts of God in our hearts. So obviously what we're filling our hearts with 
is going to be what is in our thought life. So that's why we need to fill it with the Bible, fill it with prayer and time and a relationship with God. Um, second of all, we must not have unconfessed sin before God or be holding a grudge against any other person. Um, what that's going to mean is our relationship with God isn't what it needs to be if we have something in between him and us between, as far as sin. Um, but also holding a grudge against another person uh, can be uh, something that doesn't allow us to have the right relationship with that person first of all but also with God because we're consumed with this grudge that we're holding and those thoughts can keep us from being where we need to be. Uh, thirdly, we must actively restrain what we put into our minds. Uh, pictures, movies, television, music, words we hear, things like that. Um, we have to filter those things out. Um, not, I shouldn't say filter, because you don't want to allow those things in and then just, you know, try to filter those things out. Really keep them out of your life. More than a filter, I would say, you know, a blockade, a wall to keep them out of your life. Um, because uh, the more you allow those things in there, uh, the more it's going to be a problem and it's going to be what's in your heart what's in your thoughts and mind um, so keeping those things out uh, I think of at this time you guys know that I love sports I enjoy watching them and, and following them well there is no sports right now uh, if I turn on the TV it is if there's ESPN it's like some old game from years and years ago and I don't really have an interest in that it's funny because I just had a conversation with my wife that with all the sports not going on, they've had like they've replayed the Super Bowl from just a couple months ago, and I'm not sure why. As a Chiefs fan, you'd think I'd want to watch it again. I have no interest in even watching it again. All right, I saw it happen, and I don't know why that is. I don't know if all Chiefs fans or people that like their team wins the championship if they're that way, but for me, I don't have any reason to watch it again. So I'm not even interested in that, even though it's a cool thing for my team that I root for. Uh, I don't have any interest in watching it, um, but but. I know that's kind of a rabbit trail to bring it back to what we're talking about. You know, there are a lot of, you have a lot of downtime now. You're not getting out and doing things. You're not, um, you know, in class doing things. So there's a lot of time to fill. Uh, a lot of us might choose to just do entertaining things as far as watching TV and movies and those kinds of things. We must be actively careful of what we are allowing into our life. Um, Norman's trying to get into the picture here. Sorry for the distraction. There's Norman. Say hi, Norman. <laughs> he's a little restless. He's was napping, but now he's up wandering around. Please find your seat, Norman. Uh, anyway, sorry for the distraction there. Um, but again, actively keeping those things out of our lives, especially with all this downtime we have where we're trying to fill our time with things. Um, the fourth thing, looking at... Uh, now Norman's making his bed. Hopefully he'll be done soon. He's scratching at the blankets and stuff over there. Um, but lastly, when we are tempted by Satan in some form, we must flee from him and not entertain evil thoughts. He's going to try to get those things, again, especially when you have idle time. You're not going places right now. You're going to have a lot of downtime. Satan's going to throw those things at you. We must put in a conscious effort to make sure we're not allowing those things in, to flee from Satan and to stay away from those evil thoughts. Uh, and then the other thing, again, that was just some thoughts on that God's promise of peace and how we can make sure we're having peaceful, uh, a peaceful thought life and a life that's uh, filled with God's peace because our, our thought life is where it needs to be. Um, the three illustrations that you'll find on page 208, there's three pictures there and three references. I, I provided the answers that you need to fill in, but I just wanted to give a little bit of a thought there. Um, on that the first one Galatians 5:17 the wrestlers uh there you know the 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 spirit the flesh versus spirit battle begins in our minds um and you know that battle is going to continue and what are you feeding if we think of two wrestlers now the two wrestlers in the picture there they are as in wrestling as in a high school or anywhere else they're going to be in the same weight class all right, um, which means they're going to be within probably a couple pounds of each other, um, so pretty evenly matched. Uh, it doesn't have to be that way. Yes, we're using the wrestling as an illustration, but the way that the spirit versus flesh battle uh, can be different than we think of a wrestling match, um, we can feed one. The sizes, they don't have to be the same size um, to compete against each other. So what are you feeding? 
as we looked at those forms of entertainment and the things that we're putting into our heart, are we feeding um, the one wrestler, the spirit, or are we feeding the other wrestler in the flesh? All right, whichever one is fed and is helped to develop and train and get stronger, it's going to be victorious. So what are you feeding? Your thought life and the things that you put into your heart. Um, are you feeding the flesh or are you feeding the spirit? And I, it's a simple illustration, but one that can be pretty f profound. So hopefully we're feeding the spirit and we're putting that effort into making the spirit stronger and um more well nourished and energized than starving the flesh. Um, the second illustration there, now the guy's just got his hands on his head. I think he's blocking out things that are coming in. I'm not sure what he's doing there, but um, the second illustration would be like a computer. All right, in Proverbs 19 27. Uh, and the whole idea of output equals input. So what you're putting uh, in is what's going to come out. We've talked about with that, uh, with sowing and reaping. Wrong data produces wrong action. Um, you know, if you're if you're putting bad things on your computer with viruses and all those things, your computer is going to be worthless and it's not going to um, be productive for what you want it to do. And in the same way, if we're putting junk and harmful things into our minds and our thoughts and our mind and our thoughts and our hearts are not going to be productive and putting out a good product for what the Lord wants us to do. Um, and then lastly, the third one there is a, is a big fountain, Proverbs 13, 14, 14, 27. Again, I'm providing answers to you to write in there, but just talking about it a little bit. Uh, the fountain of life, the contents of a river will be consistent with the source. So if the source is a muddy junky mess then that's what's going to be flowing through that river and the contents that are going to pour out downstream to other people and the um you know say you're that river what is the source that's feeding in um and then that river what you put out is going to be passed on to other people your attitudes your words and all those things so what are you a pure river because of the source at the other end or are you a river of just junk that you're giving to other people? So again, think of those three illustrations in your thought life and how important they are. The wrestler, the computer, uh, and the fountain of life, or uh, the fountains of life as it talks about in the, in these verses. Um, and then lastly for this chapter, chapter 27, or th uh, having the right thoughts. The teacher's lesson is pretty short here. There's a few references. Um, our thoughts affect our health, our faces, our speech, and our attitudes towards sin. So real quick looking at those, our thoughts affect our health, um, and that can be so true. Sickness and health issues can stem from worry and negative thoughts, and a lot of times we might not think those are related, um, but but they are, they definitely are. If we worry about things, if we have negative thoughts, um, I know that can be true for a lot of people that if you're, if you're worrying about something, you're stressing about it, uh, it can bring upset stomach, it can bring uh, headaches, it can bring all these things. Um, so they can have a negative impact, even though it's our, our mental, it can have a big effect on our physical. Um, our thoughts affect our face. You know, it might sound silly, uh, but uh, as it says in verse 15, 13 there, well, you know, we may hide it, we may be pretty good at hiding it, but eventually our countenance will show uh, our inward feelings. If we're a worrier, if we're stressing, it's not just a look in our eye. Um, sorry, I got blurry there again for a second. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, but um, you know, in our faces, not just in our look in our eyes, as I said, or um, you know, a frown or a smile or whatever that's on the inside coming out, but actual like permanent things like wrinkles and those kinds of things uh, can be apparent in our countenance if we um, have a thought life that's focused on a lot of negative. Uh, thirdly, our thoughts affect our speech. Um, positive or negative, what we think about becomes what we talk about. If I'm dwelling on the right things, then I'm going to talk about that. If I'm filling my mind with the evil and the bad, I'm not going to see a problem with bad language or dirty jokes or those kinds of things. Um, it's going to be fine with in my head, and that's what's going to come out. So if what you're putting in, as we talked about the computer, the output equals the input, uh, it's the same thing. So our thoughts are soon going to become our words. Um, and eventually that becomes our actions, uh, which can be very problematic for us. And then lastly, our thoughts affect our attitudes towards sin. 
uh, filling our minds uh, with right things leaves no room for sinful thoughts, making it easier to avoid sin and depart from evil. So if you fill it up, there's no room for the evil, the bad uh, in there. So if you're using this time where we have out of school um, and filling with right and working on your relationship with God and you're filling it with that, there's not going to be room for these other things that can be a negative impact. So again, remember that having our right thoughts are important because they do affect our health. They do affect our countenance, our faces. They do affect our speech. They do affect our attitudes towards sin. They impact and affect everything in our lives. Um, so guarding our hearts, guarding our thought life, keeping the bad things out and feeding in the good things, strengthening the spirit, weakening the flesh as we look at that wrestler. So again, hopefully that's beneficial to you guys as you look through the chapter. Uh, let's pray and then we'll wrap it up. Dear Lord, we thank you again for this day. Lord, thank you for each of my students in the seventh grade Bible class. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity I have to, uh, despite us being separate, Lord, to teach and to spend a little time um, sharing what you have, have laid on my heart as I've looked through these lessons. Uh, just pray that you'll be with each of them as we're not able to be in a class where we can take prayer requests and pray for each other. Lord, help us to remember to do that. Uh, and just even now, Lord, I lift each of them up to you and to uh, be with them, be with the work that they're trying to accomplish in a different kind of setting. Uh, be with the parents, help them to uh, be able to uh, help in the ways that they need to and be with them, if, especially if they're impacted by uh, uh, the jobs changing or anything like that with this virus going on. Lord, be with them. Lord, give uh, and provide. Uh, and help us to trust you Lord we can really worry and focus on the negative in this situation but Lord as this chapter talks about Lord help us to dwell on you and to focus on what you've done for us and given to us um, be with each of us until we can meet again uh, face to face and Lord help us to be uh, striving to uh, see your face in each day and to draw close to you and we'll thank you for it in your name we pray amen